Hello, welcome to my Access Tutorial. This one is created specifically for some students who are doing BTEC or GCSE. Right, so we need to import a text file or a CSV file into Microsoft Access or your database. Now you need to go and research what is a text file or a comma separated file or CSV, same thing. So you need to research what that is and the reason why they are used. Right. What does a text file look like? I'm going to bring up a sample or example of what a text file looks like. And this one, or a CSV file, it's called Dreams Factory. And that's what it looks like. It looks like a load of gibberish, where you can, all you can see is numbers, letters, but you can recognize a few words. For example, Xbox 360, um, Quantum of Solace, and so on. Um, so that's what it looks like. It contains the information that you would want that that, it, that will go into a database. As I said, I won't explain the reason why. So you need to research that bit for yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit that. So that's the information that we want to import into our database. So firstly, you need to start with Microsoft Access, and I'll do just that. So Microsoft Access. Yeah. Now once you start Microsoft Access, you need to click on blank database um, to create a new or yeah to create a new database and over here you give it a proper name. So I'm gonna call mine Dreams Factory. Dreams Factory One. So you can give it a suitable name, something that will apply to you so that you can find it whenever you need it. Over here you should click on this folder here to browse for the location where you want to put or save your database. So I want mine to be saved in my documents and name is here Dreams Factory so I click OK. Then click on create. I don't want this table so I'm just gonna close it. Then to import the CSV file I click on external data. Now this setup menus will allow you to export as well as import information into your database. I want to import the text file or information from the text file or CSV file. So I click on this one here. There's another one over here that says text file, uh, text file as well. And most people make the mistake and click on this one and have problems in finding it. This one is export. So this one you're trying to get rid of or to get information from the database into a text file. But in this case, we want to import the data. So we click on this one. If you don't remember, just hover your mouse over it and it will tell you, like mine there, import text file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then I'm going to select browse. Now, I select browse to locate the text file. And also I make sure that import the source data into a new table in the current database is ticked. This will allow me to create a new table with the information that I'm importing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on browse to locate my text file. Mine is in my documents. You should know where yours is saved so that you can access it. So I'm going to double click on that. And the link to where my text file is, is here. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, if you, get, you can see the information down here that appears in my text file or CSV file. I'm going to ensure that I select delimited characters because this will tell the database that each field in my text file is separated by commas. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now, if tab was selected, you would notice all information is jum jumbled just the same. But with this particular text file, each field is separated by a comma. So if I select comma there, it will basically put it into categories which are called fields by re replacing the commas with fields or, li or vertical lines which will split it into fields. So I'm going to go ahead and select next. At this point, I can rename each field. I can change the name here. So if I want, I can call this one ID or product, product ID, product name. No, sorry. I can call this one product name. And I can set the data types over here. Um, I probably will do a separate lesson on data types if you request that one. But data types are simple to understand. Um, it's just a way to ensure that or to reduce entering errors into your database by setting the data types. For example, this one over here, if I set it to be currency, I will be unable to enter text. The only thing I could enter over here is currency and so on. 
So I'll give this a name, I'll call it product ID. And you can give your field names the proper name so that you know what is under each field. I'm not going to label the rest yet, um, but you should go ahead at this point and include your field names for your database. So I'm going to click next. Now if you notice at this point, it is trying to add another primary key or to add a key field. Now key field and primary key is the same thing. A primary key is a unique field that identifies each record. For example, James Bond Quantum of Solace game will have an ID, ID of 1. So I can use that to create searches to find that particular game without confusing it with any other game. In real databases, people have the same first and last name and surprisingly sometimes the same date of birth and even weirder, they were, they were, have, they were born in the same country or same place or something like that. And therefore, having a primary key or a unique ID will separate each record and prevent confusion. Right. So at this point, I don't want access to add a primary key because the text file or CSV file came with its own primary key already. So I'm going to select let um, no primary key. If there wasn't any primary key, I would say let access add primary key. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. At this point, you give the table a name. I'm going to call mine James Factory. Uh, you would give yours a suitable name based on what your, the information in your database is. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. I don't want to analyze anything. Um, analyze it would pretty much search for errors or any data types that don't match with the data that's there or um, check if there, there's, there are duplicate information in it and ask if you want to delete it and so on. So I'm not going to do that now. So click finish. I don't want to save any steps so I'm going to go ahead and click close. Now, my table appears or appear over here so I'm going to double click on that to bring my table up. Now at this point I can rename my fields and put the appropriate data types. So here I have my field names recorded in my, a table that I'm going to use to set it up. So these are my field names that I'm going to in, input. At this point go ahead and add your field names. My field names will have different data types and I'm going to show you a few. Auto number is a number that the database will generate automatically so each time you enter a new record it will generate that particular number so you won't have to think about adding numbers or ID numbers to your database it will do it automatically that's what auto number will do um, there's a more better explanation but I'm just rushing through at the moment product name text any information that will not be used in calculation or just simple plain text including numbers phone numbers and so on Phone number, yes, phone number is a text a text to data type as it will not be used as part of a calculation. You can research those as well. And product name, or sorry, product type, if you notice it says lookup wizard. So I'm going to show you how to do a lookup wizard data type. And hope, yeah. So go back, to, I'm going to go back to my Dreams Factory database and I'm going to go to home. Then I'm going to select my design view. On the design view, this one, field 4, I'm going to call it, sorry, field 3, I'm going to call it product type and I'm going to give it the lookup wizard data type. Now over here you can see I want the list, this to be from the drop down, so it's video, Wii game, Xbox, DVD, book and console. So lookup wizard will give you a drop down list to choose from in this case. So I will type in the values I want. You can do it from a query or another table and so on, but in this case, this is a simple version. Click on next. And on the list, the first one I want is video. Oops, back. Next, I want Wii game. Next, I want Xbox 360. I'm just copy and paste this. Because I'm lazy. And DVD. So again, look up wizard, you can use that to create a drop down list from your field, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, last one, console. Yes, so click on next, and you can give it a name. I'm going to label mine product type. 
and click finish. Now let's see how that works. So I'm just going to go back to, well, change back to text. Never mind, just leave it as is. And then go back to your data sheet view. Make sure you click save first. And under product type, if I click there, notice it now gives me a drop down list and I can choose from whichever one is I want. So that's how you create a drop down list. And you use the data type lookup wizard. Right, next I'm going to go ahead and rename my other fields and you can do the same. Now I'm going to show you how to create a validation rule. In this case I want the validation rule to be under tone. Now that validation rule should only accept tones such as Pitsy, South Benfleet, Vange, Canvey Island and Rayleigh. Now if you enter another tone it will not accept this data. This is how you do it. I'm going to click on my town field and this is my design view as you can see and down here where it says validation rule I'm going to type Pitsy or South Benfleet or Vange or Canvey Island or Rayleigh and then you don't have to put the quotation it will automatically put the quotes for you in the validation text you don't have to input anything it will give you a generic message that will highlight the information that you put there or you can put your, your particular message you want to put. You can put the message such as sorry you you should you can only enter tones such as Pitsy, South Benfleet and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click go back to the design view so save it first and click all those yeses it's just trying to ensure that you don't want to delete data that you don't need to delete. So I just click, click yes all the way through. Now if I should delete one of these tones and put say London, should give me an error message because it wasn't in the predefined set of info, data that we wanted to be there. So it tells, it's now telling me that you cannot only enter Pitsy, South Benfield, Banj and so on. So click OK. So it won't allow you to move on until you enter one of those tones. So that's a simple validation rule. When I import said my data from the CSV file, my deposit paid field came over with ones and zeros, minus ones and so on. Um, I think what happened was the data type read this here as a number and assigned the zero to mean no, minus one to mean yes. Or it could have as, it could as well have done a one for yes and a zero for no. So all you have to do to change that to the correct look is to go to the design view and deposit paid you change it to a yes or no field. If it was already saying yes or no with the ones and zeros, all you would simply do is to change it to something else, click off, then change it back to the yes and no, and it would automatically give you the correct look. Just click save and then go back to the data sheet view, um, click yes, then it will show you the field in the correct format. So that's a no, it's now a yes, and I put it back to a no. No, yes. Good.